Y'all yeah. make y'all comments in here. Y'all get in the chat rooms and um, say what you feel. All right, so relationship time. Who asked who to go on a date first? Was it you or me? Who asked who? Mm, it was you. It was me. Yep, that's true. So he got that one right, y'all. All right. Who said I love you first? It was you. Yep. I asked him to go out first. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, you know, said I love you first. It was equal. Oh, wait a minute. It's more on here. Mm-hmm. Who changed their Facebook relationship status first? You. Me. That was me. Who mentioned marriage first? You. That was me. Well, dang. That was me. <laughs> All of it. You, you wanted to be married. Men don't feel as obligated to marriage. No, we just... Who has the craziest family? Me. Okay, don't forget about Brian Nichols, though. I think mm-hmm. he trumps everything. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> I'm I actually like Brian. I think he's cool. I yeah. Just, yeah, he just made a big mistake, but he's cool. Yeah, but that took the cake. Uh, one person in her family took all of my family. Do you all remember? Um, don't even we tell got time. No, nah, we don't. Okay. We'll leave my home who, picked, who picked out the engagement ring? Me. Yes, Stan did. So, so far, we have not disagreed on anything. Who is the better dancer? Me. Dancing. Now that's not true. All the Stan has one time the for that same. Two step. He got the one same. One time for the two step. step. That he, he, hey, Stan. One time, one time for the bus dance. No, you're not the better dancer. Be honest. Who's what? the better dancer? Because even when we first I met, you was like, "That's up. one thing I like about you is that you Why can I dance." So what y'all front. say? Huh? All you do is that same old man two step. But you I, I do the. I have the snake. Hey, hey, I, yeah. That's all you got? I, I'm just saying, I know how to do the snake. I know how to do the happy feet. I know how to do the worm. I wish I could show y'all the right, worm. You, you, you. So who, who's you, the better dancer? Yes, you can do all that. Yes. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that too. <laughs> can y'all imagine staying doing the worm? Let me see you do. What's the worm? The worm is when you get down on the floor and you go. You've been on, you doing the floor? Uh-huh. You do it. Come on, let's go. I'm telling you. So, I'm crazy. So. You been on the floor, though? What part of you been on the damn floor, Terry? I've been on the floor doing the worm. You lying. Yes. They should have put your ass out. Yes. That's the day I Have you ever done the period. worm? Have you ever done the worm? Mm-hmm. Do the robot. He got a cute robot, though. Oh, I can't get no do robot. it. Come on, baby. Do it. I'm, I'm not. Right. No, I'm not. Keep going. Okay. We're talking relationships. You're probably it's serious. It's just questions. I know it's serious and fun. Um, Who is the funniest? Me? No, you. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say, come on now, you know I'm the funniest. Yeah, you silly. Who is the most romantic? Mm, you. That would be me. Um, speaking of romance, let's talk about that a little bit, you all. I would like to get you all's input, men especially, of what you all consider romance. What's, romance can be different for different people. For me, I will share that what I consider romantic is, I remember um, when we were um, dating and Stan, when you, we were long distance and he would come visit me, you know, I think like once a month um, sometimes. And one time when I got home from work, I think you had stayed there longer before you had to drive and hit the road. Mm-hmm. And when I got home from work, he was gone. But on my perfume stand, he had wrote a note with a paper towel and just said, I love you with a heart. That's super, I'll never forget that. That's super romantic to me. And then the other most romantic thing that he's ever done I used to have to go travel a lot for my job before the pandemic. And one time I came back from just, you know, a crazy two days in New York and on the train. And when I walked in the house, I was so just like, oh my God, just traveling was sucking. All blah, blah, blah. And he was just like, he opened the door. I mean, listen, I had the most romantic night. He opened the what door. Did he, do? he, the door. he opened the door <laughs> with his towel on, smelling good. He was freshly shaved. It was just like like out of a movie. And he just was like, put your he was like, put your bags down. And when I got upstairs, he already had my favorite. He know uh, romance for me. Romance for me is this kind of stuff. And he had, I love slow music, y'all. Like I love old school slow music. He had the music playing. He had candles burning. You see that? And on the bed, he had it laid out with some of my favorite candies with sugar babies on the bed. And it was a towel. Listen, there was a towel laid out on the bed for my massage and he told me to go get in the shower 
So I can get cleaned up. And I, he said, oh, I'm going to take care of my baby. I know you had a rough travel time. And let me tell you something. I will, those are the two, two things that he's done that I never forget. Like I said, it was nothing. It was very simple with the paper towel. He wrote, hand wrote on there, I love you with a heart. And that time I came back from traveling. Like, so for me, that is the epitome of romance for me. Um, I don't need you to send me to Paris on a, a trip, a surprise. What you did, those two things right there are the most memorable things for me um, at this point um, in our relationship. So that's what romance means to me. What about to you? Um, you mean as far as what you've done? What do you consider you romantic or anything? Yeah. I um, feel romantic is the time that we used to meet halfway. Oh, yeah. So when we first met, we were in different states. So we would always have a halfway point, right? And we would meet at this hotel, wherever we'd be halfway, we would get a hotel mm -hmm. and we would stay there for a weekend. And mm -hmm. it was different, multiple places. So yeah. it was really sexy because we would still get to know each other. It was new. And so we wouldn't see each other for maybe three weeks at a time. And so yes. when we did, we locked in and we was kind of just locked into the hotel. We order food and the whole nine, and we would just be in there. And so I thought that was romantic because a lot of different things we did while we were there on different times. That was the first one time were. I peed on myself, remember? Because <laughs> I was laughing so hard. That wasn't romantic. That oh. wasn't oh. romantic part. That's, that's what I'd be saying. So um, <laughs> this is why. This is why. So That was part of romantic weekend, yeah, though. It wasn't, though. But, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is this is what I mean. Walks in the park, holding hands by the beach, um, walking on the beach in the sand, having sex in the, on the beach um, in the daytime, not the nighttime, basically. So like, huh? We haven't did that yet. Not on the beach, but You'd in the scary. park. You'd no. be scary. Who's scary? You want me to call okay, you that one time? I wasn't park, scary. We was, in the, was, we was at a park, and he was like, it was, it was, he, he was like, there's kids out here. So, and I'm like, so? <laughs> they wouldn't so, pay us no attention. I was, so we went out there and had sex in the park, right? We, what? First of all, we was out of town, and it was like yeah. I don't even know where we were, we but it was a like, park by some water and all yeah, that. So it was kind of sexy. Perfect. Right? What's that? So we, so we went over there. And it was a park bench, and so we was gonna go go on a park bench and do. I looked over her shoulders. They was having a field trip. And I it think was it was a, bunch a kid's of birthday kids party. Kids over there. But I'm like, so oh, like oh no. Nah. So who backed out? Well, that was the only reason though that it came to the kids. But yeah. Mm. So anyway. Anytime you can keep it hot, keep it hot. That's keep what it hot. Saying. Keep it hot. That's okay. Who is most likely to run late? You all day. You late, you late after being late. You still late. After they That's be true, late. Y'all. Um, who is the better driver? Me. CDL, Mr. CDL. Okay, I'm just gonna say this. You are the better driver on record because you do have a CDL and I don't. But as far as the safest driver, I feel like that is me. You're aggressive. I'm, I, I wait, drive baby, this free. I, well, we're supposed to be talking about relationship issues and getting love back and stuff. Uh, get, I'm answering the questions that people sent. Anybody else do? These are the questions. That okay. go, yeah. Um, it's like trivia. Yeah, it was like a relationship game relationship. that people, okay. um, and then, yeah, right, so we'll, we still going. got time. Um, who say, so we did that. Who is the clumsiest? You. That's true. Now, say why you love each other. Who want to go first? You go first. Okay, so I love you, Stan Long, for many reasons. I, I love you most for the most valuable thing that you've given me. Um, those of you know, I've been very open about, you know, myself and my journey in this relationship. Like I said, you know, we met on Facebook and um, we dated online and, and FaceTime for several months before we got together. And um, uh, why you do you threw me off? You drag. You give me too much story. Um, to it. Okay. And so uh, I wasn't very, very, uh, a very spiritual woman, right? I, I love God all my life, but I wasn't very spiritual. Um, and when I met Stan, he introduced me to something that is very valuable, that has become very valuable to me. I have grown my relationship with God tremendously. My walk, my spiritual walk has, has changed my life. And um, I, I owe it, I owe that mainly to him, obviously, and God. But so that's the main reason that I love you. I also love you for coming into a relationship with children and parents. My, marrying me really, truly meant marrying my family. And he 
has been a trooper. Like, I mean, I'm very close with my parents, my sister, my children. And um, he went through the ruffles with me as we blended our family. Um, so I love you for that. And um, I love you for just being, staying true to who you have been um, all your life and, and being an example of what a real man truly is and, and me, making me realize that I've always needed someone like you in my life. And so Aww. those are the things that I really and truly love about you. And that's, that's sweet of you to say. I appreciate that. And so for me, as an easy one, the, the thing that I always loved about you is your heart. I saw that you had a heart that was for everybody that was involved in your life, um, friend or foe. You still reach for people. So I thought that was a beautiful situation. Um, your loyalty, I felt that you was, a, you was loyal to whoever you loved and cared for, um, including myself, um, dedicated from day one. And so I thought that was huge. And so that was one of the things that made me fall in love with you when I first met you, that you took a chance. Like a lot of people won't bet if they can't see a sure shot win. Like when you're an entrepreneur, you don't see a sure shot win. You just see somebody betting on themselves and they putting their, you know, stuff together. And that's what I was doing when I met you. And so you betted on me. And I thought that was big. So your loyalty, the fact that you had a big heart and that you was trusted. Like I felt that I could trust you to rock with me and wouldn't let me down. So I love you for those things. And then you can cook your face off. Like you can cook like crazy. So. No, that can't no. hurt. But and you're a homemaker, you're a person who likes to see family. And so that was a big deal because I didn't have a real family structure. My mother was my family pretty much. And I didn't have a real, you know, solid <clears throat> family foundation. So I thought that that was something that was a gift, you know. And if you come together, of course, remember when you engage with somebody, you don't also date who they, you know, their family members. So you have to examine the whole situation and I saw that you had a house but I also saw that you had a loving house you know so that was a good thing you know even though your kids were tough at first this is because I wasn't they wasn't used to you know what I you know having somebody in the picture with. Yeah. And so I I just I just thank you for having such a, a big heart. I think that that's huge because um and the loyalty you know even when things got rough for us in the beginning, it used to be really rough, especially for me financially, because I was transitioning. I'm coming from the state, starting over a career, from the bottom, everything, right? Starting a whole new show from a whole different state, everything happened. So production company, all of those things had to be from a new. So you had to bet on me, right? And, and so I thank you for that. And I think that's honorable. Yeah, I think that's a big deal. So what would you um, say for people? Um, there was one person who wanted to know about they're, they're dating long distance. And what would you say was the most valuable thing and then the most difficult thing about um, couples who start out dating long distance? That's an easy one. The most valuable thing to me, for me personally. Right, for me. We'll answer um, both. Yeah, the, the most valuable thing dating long distance for me um, is, the, is the, the time you get to spend intimately uh, in communication. Mm -hmm. Because you can't really go pick them up, take them on dates, go to the movies, go dinners, but you can talk and you can conversate and get to see what the person is made like, how they think, how they feel about situations, all of that. So you get to be intimate in that way, right? And it builds up. So then when you do see that person, then you get to lock in. What I didn't like about it is the fact, like I said from the beginning, you don't get a chance to go on dates. You don't get a chance to say, I'm gonna come pick, pick you up tomorrow morning and we're gonna go have breakfast. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to come at your job and take you to lunch. Um, I want to have dinner tomorrow night at the theater or whatever. You can't do that right. when you're in another state, but it does give you something to long for. So you, if you value those times, you can build that basement that I was talking about. And that's what we was able to do for six months. And so we missed some things because you don't get to be personal and, and get to wear them out. But we also had an advantage because we were three and four hours at a time you know, on the phone. And yeah. so those things is what built the friendship. And one thing I'll say about relationships, guys, is you want to be friends more than anything. You yeah. know, the love life, that's going to wear thin eventually. You can only have sex for so many ways. You can only get wet so many times. You can only be this so many ways. And this and that. But what we do know is this and the conversations, the communications, the different places you go, the vibes you create can also create more of those times. But you do have to be friends because it's going to be times where you're not going to like the person you're with. 
you're just not like you're not going to feel them every day you know and if you feel like you're going to love your mate to death every day you haven't been married you definitely haven't dated that many people because you can just have a girlfriend or boyfriend for a short period of time and they can do one thing and how the young kids say well i'm irritated or whatever right but I'm, blown. Push, I'm blown all that you gotta push past that because <laughs> you're gonna have those days yeah. and so just like you're blown with the person you with don't think the new person the new guy or the new girl not gonna get you just feeling the same way they're just gonna do something different to blow you that's all but yeah. you'll be blown it's just the friendship you build is what make you get past that so when you feel like you're blown you can still say well we're friends though and so i'm blown but this is my friend so i don't like her today but i still love her you can say that that's very true. Um, um, so true about the friendship. Like when we have had difficult times, I always think to myself, like, I don't want to lose my friend. So, you know, like some, so sometimes I'll say, you know, where's my boyfriend at? Because before we became husband and not wife, we were friends and he was my boyfriend. And a lot of times when we try, when we go back to those times, even mentally, it helps bring back a little bit more smile and laughter and fun because, you know, I'm like, at the end of the day, I don't, of course, I don't want to lose my husband. I don't want to lose my friend. And Stan has been like my bestie for, you know, for, since the time that we met, like, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about a lot of things and he's really like my bestie, sometimes so much to the point where I probably would take it too far and tell him things. He's like, wait, ho, ho, I ain't your girlfriend now. You ain't got to tell me all of that kind of stuff. But he truly yeah. is and has been like my best friend. So when we go through difficult times, or when you all go through difficult times, I think that you really, if you are true friends first, that's something that you're going to want to hold on to. And it helps you bring it back, bring everything back. You know, it's like, let's be friends again. Let's have fun some more. Let's, you know, not be so stringent with each other with these married husband, wife rules. Let's just be really our best friends again. And um, that, that usually helps bring us back a lot as well. Yeah, the friendship. That's what I mean. That's that foundation. So you have to set that in order to come back to it. You have to set it to come back to it. If you haven't set the foundation, then you don't have anything to stand on. Yeah. And so um, I think one of the things that hurt us um, in long distance is that we didn't get to see some of the things that occurred intimately in our lives, you know, separately. Very true. Um, how you raise children, how you think about children, family, how you structure how you were raised. Um, yeah. All of these things are important. Like if you were raised the way you want to know, you want to have conversations about how you, what's the background, do the background check on your mate. You know, look at mama a little bit because, you know, this woman headed that way a little bit. Um, if her mother is having some issues and things not all the way right, you might want to check that and just see if you can see some of that because it will sometimes show up in the same person that you date and vice versa. If you have an alcoholic uh, stepfather, then you have to check the temperatures and make sure if you have a drug use person or a person who has you know, health issues, this and that, all those things are important. So if y'all hear a lot of background noise, just know we had a live retreat situation. So they blessed us with an area that we can broadcast live. Yeah. But it's still a bunch of people running around in this big old So you all hear the noise, that's what it is. Yeah. So make sure that, like, like we said, you know, I can't stress enough having a friendship. That's truly important because... When the, the, the passion sometimes is going to fade, the fire is going to go out, a lot of those things are going to happen. And you really need Y'all come to on have, in. Come on in. You really need to have foundation. Y'all see our gang back there? <laughs> 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 come on. Come on um, in. Really, come in. Y'all see part of our family? Come in. Come in. Hey. Y'all come on in. Hey, hey. hey. So, hey. So we, are, we are live at our retreat. Y'all see what's happening. We got the gang gang. We got our family here.